Welcome everybody to our very first virtual Lean Forum. So we're very excited and wonderful to have you online with us today. Um, and what is wonderful about offering a virtual session is that we can invite a guest speaker who's based in Mpumalanga. So that's definitely a benefit. Um, but my name is Sarah Giles and I'm from Training Leadership Consulting. We partner and are very privileged to partner with the Peter Maritzburg Chamber of Business or Midlands Chamber of Business and um, in running these lean forums. So I thought just to start, there are a few online um, who have joined our lean forums before, but for those who haven't, I thought we could just start with a very short overview, a quick introduction about who we are as training leadership consulting. And then I will introduce our guest speaker and hand over to you, Paliswa. So to get started, training leadership consulting, who are we? All right. So we are a business improvement training and consulting business. We are based in Peter Maritzburg and we work with businesses around the country, helping them reduce the cost of doing business. So we have consistently resolved long-standing problems. We have over 100 courses, short business skills courses, business improvement, leadership strategy, and then learnerships. I'll go into a bit more detail about that shortly. And we've worked with a variety of companies all around the country, um, as well as in Africa. Um, and we've trained over 6,500 people. I'm very privileged to have the opportunity to train and develop people. And um, we're level two BE, and we've helped businesses save millions with the projects we've been involved with, with the training and um, our consulting projects. So welcome to those who've just joined. Um, we have just started, um, but just doing a, a very quick overview about who we are as training leadership consulting and um, as partners with the PMCB running these lean forums. And, and then just some more information here, just around the different um, aspects of our business. So we work in continuous improvement, so lean, and so that's why we are partners for this lean forum. So all of our courses are internationally accredited. Um, so we offer lean, lean Six Sigma, the suite of different Six Sigma courses, change management, customer experience, um, you'll see their leadership and strategy. So we've got different leadership programs that we offer, um, as well as very short business skills programs, um, which we offer as both classroom training and online for all of our courses. Um, and then on the skills development side around our learnerships. So we do offer learnerships on business administration and generic management. And then as well as skills programs that we run. Um, so I've also just thought it'd be good just to share quickly just some of the businesses that we've worked with. Um, these are just a few of them, but quite a few are local, which is great. We've had the opportunity to run workshops, uh, run different learnership programs, um, you know, training, consulting, um, different projects. So we really are privileged to work with a range of different businesses and a variety of industries helping as our purposes to inspire a generation of proactive problem-solving leaders. So that brings me to introducing our guest speaker for today. And I would like to introduce Paliswa Mguni, who I've known since 2014. So we met when you worked for Productivity SA. And we're very grateful to have you online with us today, Paliswa. So Paliswa is a certified Lean Six Sigma Black Belt through Training Leadership Consulting, and he has over 19 years experience. He has been trained by the Toyota factory on, to on the Toyota production system and as a productivity practitioner through the Asian Productivity Organization. As a senior productivity advisor and project leader, he has implemented lean tools and run projects on site for multiple companies in a variety of different industries. He's also a lecturer, so he's lectured for quite a few years, 
and his expertise, his insight, practical knowledge are highly valuable for leaders wanting to embark on a lean journey. So police, I hand over to you. Uh, we really are looking forward to hearing from you, hearing about your experiences and just sharing practical insights with us um, from your experience over many years. So welcome, police. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, very, very kind and gracious of you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I wonder if I could share uh, my slides, uh, Sarah. Yes, of course, of course. Sorry, let me stop sharing. There you go. Can I stop sharing? Perfect. Um, I feel I need to check. Can you, everyone see my uh, slides? Yes, perfect. Thank you, Police. Yes. Perfect. Thank see. you so much. We just, I'll go. we just can't see your face. If you want to maybe turn your video on and say hi, <laughs> so everyone can see you, and then you don't have to have it on for the whole presentation. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and this one will be a very, very, very brief. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Colleagues, thank you so much. I would like to acknowledge um, um, I, I still am inclined to call them the Peter Maritzberg Chamber of Business because I'm from KZN and that's how I, I've always known them to be. But I see they, that uh, we now call the Chamber, Peter Maritzberg and Midlands Chamber of Business. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, TLC. Uh, I, I, I want to acknowledge TLC as my, as my family because uh, as Sarah mentioned earlier on, um, I joined or rather I first met TLC in 2014 finally finishing my black belt qualification in 2017 um, and what attracted me to TLC without buying their face and I think they know this is um, the caliber of the clients that uh, they had serviced and um, I, I figured if I can um, learn from a group of people that have assisted this suite or this variety of clients surely um, I, I should be able to 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 benefit a lot at, at the end of the day and certainly the lessons learned during my time studying a uh, lean six sigma black belt with tlc has paid dividends in terms of the value that i want to believe i've added in you know some of the organizations that i've worked with certainly the results speak for themselves and um so a a, a big thank you to tlc but also uh, i would like to acknowledge our esteemed guests and i hope uh, to share something that may be of value to you so uh, we've prepared some slides and I'm hoping that we'll have some Q&A at, at the end. Colleagues, the, 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 the crux of our conversation today is based on this concept called Kaizen. Some of us here may have seen the word or rather may have seen the concept. It's a little bit more than just a concept or a word or, or joining of two words, uh, Kai and Zen, which translate to in English, very loosely continual improvement. It's about self-reflection. It's about taking pause to look at what you are actually doing uh, in terms of following processes, in terms of a, a, a following some form of steps or a, a, a series of steps in, in, in achieving or taking you towards uh, achieving some results that the client will be happy to pay for. So that is really going to be uh, the, the core of our discussion today. And I thought it would be important at this stage to also just introduce these two terms or these terminologies because uh, we, we see them a lot, uh, Lean and Six Sigma. And uh, as you know, uh, TLC offers Lean Six Sigma LSBB uh, modules uh, and, and, and maybe just to look at what that entails. Look, without going into the respective um, uh, concepts or, or, or modules and, and, their, and their contents, the common goal of these two approaches is really uh, to focus on the customer, eliminate NVA or non-value added uh, or non-value adding elements of work that end up delaying or causing long lead times and invariably adding to the cost of servicing the client, reduction of variability, increasing speed, reduction of errors, rework and quality problems. All of these ultimately lead to profitability, which is really the reason why most businesses, I believe, are open today. Uh, ultimately, when organizations uh, show or indicate or deliver profitability, uh, then they can be successful. 
if you join these two methodologies or these two approaches, uh, you really have a very effective set of skills that you can deploy within a, a variety of organizations. And I've had the privilege of working in a variety of different organizations from clothing, manufacturing, to furniture, to process engineering, to fabrication, to uh, petroleum, to lubrication oil, blend plants, even in the forestry business. Uh, we've been able to apply many of these tools with a, a degree of, of measurable success. Colleagues, uh, very much connected to the concept of Kaizen uh, is, is the concept of productivity. And productivity is a, is a term that measures, or is a ratio rather, that measures total output over total input. Uh, the easiest way to measure productivity is to look at the rents and cents. In other words, if you're looking at total output, you would be looking at your revenue. In other words, uh, uh, money generated from sales. Uh, input would be all the money spent on your expenses, be it labor or your machinery or your materials or even uh, systems. There are certain misperceptions or misconceptions re often related to or linked with productivity, which of course we need to address. One of them is Productivity is about working hard. Nothing could be further from the truth. Productivity is actually about working smart. It's about finding easier, simpler, better ways of doing exactly what you've been, been doing for the last 20 years in a manner that could be said to be simpler, better, faster. Uh, productivity is also a, a, a concept that is often associated with a reduction of heads on the production floor. A properly structured and a, a logically implemented productivity improvement program should actually lead to more uh, to job creation. Uh, but of course, unfortunately, the word productivity or the concept of productivity has been misused uh, by different people to actually lead to or to as a preface to job losses. Productivity is also seen by some as a, a responsibility of employees. I can, I'm here to, to, to share with you that actually productivity improvement is a responsibility shared by both employees and the employers because they are respective roles that are expected from each end. So there's a number of these perceptions, some of which we are going to deal with uh, and blow to smithereens hopefully as we proceed, but uh, those are just some of the misperceptions or misconceptions related to productivity. Uh, the aim here is to obviously see more output coming out of the process and ideally less and less inputs or same inputs but getting more output at the end of the, the line. Colleagues, I want to create a, 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 a business case, so to speak, in terms of why we are even here talking about uh, Kaizen or Lean Six Sigma and all the other uh, wonderful tools. Colleagues, uh, we are all familiar with what's going on in the, in, in the land, not only in South Africa, but across the continent and across the world. You know, I've used this acronym um, or mnemonic uh, pestle to remind us of the, 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 the factors that define or characterize our uh, macroeconomics, the, you know, the political, the economic, the, the social, technological, economic, as well as legislative uh, dynamics that shape our country. We certainly don't have much control over these. However, certainly things can be done differently within our organizations, which is why we are here talking Kaizen productivity and the, the tools such as Lean Six Sigma Black Belt. Of course, as you come inward or as you approach your own organization, we also have to look at what's happening at your at, at, at your supplier, uh, supply end upstream. Uh, have you considered lately what your suppliers are actually doing or what are the influencing factors that lead to certain decisions being, being taken by your suppliers, your strategic partners, your customers and buyers, your competitors and new entrants, your regulators. Uh, some, of, some, some, some industries are more regulated than others, as well as what's happening in terms of your substitute products. There are always dynamics in these in the in, in these areas which we need to be cognizant of, of course, in order that we are able to make responsive uh, and responsible choices within the organization uh, that will either take advantage or mitigate uh, 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 as you move forward. Um, so as you look inward into the organization, you are then confronted with what we call a productivity cascade. Uh, I've already alluded to the concept of total factor productivity, which measures essentially your output. Uh, uh, as opposed uh, as as compared to your inputs, very often we, we look at rents rents um, uh, generated against rents spent. Of course, your total factor productivity, colleagues, is a function of what we call single factor productivity measures. Those being your human capital productivity, your men your your men hours. How many of you? You don't have to answer the question. How many of you are actually measuring 
um, uh, labor hours against what you are actually producing at the end of the line. Uh, your machine hours, your materials, how much material are you using against what you are getting at the end of the line? There could be other factors, of course, colleagues, which I did not mention here, such as your systems and various other things that could also be uh, in the mix uh, uh, and could also form part of the single factor productivity measures. The reason why we are mentioning these key three uh, or these three key single factor productivity measures is because these are the ones that seem to account for the majority of your costs uh, in, in, a, in your, on your, on your, on your income statement. Of course, in order to manage your single factor productivity measures, you then need to uh, have a very, very uh, 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 clear measurement uh, uh, and control of your efficiency or speed. Very often when I walk into businesses, and I still do that even though I've migrated from KZN to Mpumalanga, I still walk into uh, businesses and I ask, so how do you measure your efficiency? You'll be amazed at how many organizations uh, struggle to answer this question. You know, because if you are, if you can't or if you aren't measuring efficiency, then we've got a problem already. We do know that if this is not being measured or if it's not uh, at the forefront or in on your dashboard, then you are probably uh, having difficulties in terms of uh, uh, efficiency related problems, which could lead to such things as overtime, which could lead to higher cost of production or servicing, which could lead to maybe even cash flows or even profit profitability problems. You can you can you can um, extrapolate from the efficiency levels within the organization um, in terms of what the results at the end of the of the line might be. Resource utilization, you've got a resource that is being paid for for eight hours a day, but how many of these hours is the resource actually busy? You know, sometimes I would walk into a factory and ask a production manager or an operations manager, do you have any maintenance problems? And they say no. Interestingly, when we talk, the, when, when we take a walk on the floor, we find a machine standing idling or not doing anything and you ask but wh why is this machine standing and the answer is uh, we're waiting for spares how oh, but i thought we didn't have any maintenance problems how come you have a machine that is standing and not producing or you find sawdust or sand or cloth under a machine and then you wonder did this come with the machine is this part of the production manual or uh, operation manual uh, very often the answer is no the reason why you've got sand sawdust or, or cloth under the particular machine is because it's leaking because uh, there are some maintenance problems. Um, invariably, you'll find that if you look at your measurable factors, um, you are also going to have to confront the issue of wastage. As wastage is defined as anything other than the minimum requirement of resources that allows you to finish a unit of work. So if you are using two people when only one is required, the additional resources is a wastage. If you are taking two minutes when only one minute is, is, is budgeted for, the additional minute is wastage. If you are taking five more minutes in a presentation, and I'm hoping I don't do that, the additional five minutes will be seen as wastage. And if you are a student of lean, you will know that we see lean, or rather we categorize lean in, in eight different categories. And we use the acronym Team Woods in order to remember these different types of waste. T, uh, transportation, I, inventory, M, motion, W, waiting, and there's a lot of waiting in organizations which hardly gets measured. O, first O is overproduction. The second O is uh, overprocessing. D is defects and um, uh, quality problems. S could be seen, depending on the school of thought, could be seen as wastage of space or wastage of uh, skill and, and capacity. Of course, another problem that needs to be looked at or variable that needs to be looked at is the issue of absenteeism or its recent brother or, or most current contemporary brother called presenteeism. Uh, presentism means, if you remember the song, your body is here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. So we physically have a human resource uh, on a chair, but the resource's mind is not on the chair or in front of the screen. It's elsewhere. That is one of the greatest ways which is difficult to measure. Colleagues, underpinning all of these, you know, the beautiful thing about measurable factors and your single factor productivity measures, as well as your TFP, is that you can put a number to these things. What becomes a problem, it's, See this as an iceberg model, where the 10% of the problem is above the water and the 90% is below the water. Your qualitative factors are the most finicky to measure, um, let alone manage, if you really have a weak strategy. Such qualitative factors include communication, motivation, a, a, a lack thereof leads to a trust issues, finger pointing, fear among employees, uh, not knowing the feature. In fact, one of the ways in which we measure these is we, we, we conduct a survey whereupon uh, you will find a question among the first, you know, top five questions. 
Do you know where the company is going? You'll be surprised how many people actually mark disagree because very often, as much as we think as organizations that we do actually communicate very clearly, what we actually do is talk one way to employees. We don't always communicate, which is two way getting feedback to see that um, the audience is actually listening and absorbing what is being shared. Of course, I'm generalizing issues of leadership or perceptions on leadership, perceptions on, on management, um, skill in problem solving, and there are various structured, tried and tested approaches that can assist in this regard. Issues of teamwork, very, very important. I do apologize. I thought I'd switched it off. Colleagues, in order for you to be able to improve uh, all of the issues on the uh, productivity cascade, one has to look at CIPOC, uh, which is a term I, I learned uh, during my, my days as a student of LSPP at uh, TLC. CIPOC stands for suppliers who give you inputs, your processes, outputs, and those are your customers. Of course, when we say customers, we don't only mean your, 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 your customers externally or outside of your organization. They are a number of very important uh, and organic relationships Relationships, customer supplier relationships that exist within organizations, which are also important to look at and improve in order that you can then uh, hope to improve the customer delight outside of the organization. It's very uh, uh, depressing sometimes when you uh, engage with the client internally within the organization and ask them, uh, I, 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 are you focusing and are you improving your internal customer relation uh, relationships? Uh, and they say no. Well, well, naturally, if you are not improving and strengthening or fortifying the internal supplier, uh, sub, uh, customer supplier relationships, um, you, you have not even you, you're not even in the ballpark in terms of addressing the issues of the clients outside. So very important CIPOC. Very often when we do our work, colleagues, the audiences re, uh, include your CEOs, your directors, various team members who are uh, identified by the organization, operators, because these are the people that actually add value and actually touch. Uh, 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 the product and produce a finished product on a daily basis, certainly managers as well. And the training uh, uh, approach that we follow is one where we actually put people in a two to four hour session per day for four to five days in a classroom. Uh, why two to four hours? What we have found over time is that an eight hour training session may not be as productive as a two to to four hour session. You get to focus. And in fact, I might want to uh, 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 um, recommend that you go and familiarize yourself with something called training within industry, um, which by the way, is maybe seen by some as a foundation to continuous improvement as we now know it uh, uh, as, as popularized by the Japanese. Um, the, the, the two to four hour sessions for, for, for four to five days uh, are usually aimed at uh, teaching some, 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 some tools, some skills, where we then need to apply these uh, immediately on the floor where we observe. And the observation for us, uh, people who uh, improve or help to improve processes means that you've, you are carrying a clipboard uh, and, 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 and a lead pencil or a clutch pencil where you are identifying such things as a cycle time on the, on the, on the, on the machinery. Uh, we are looking at your quality, number of people, number of shifts, available time, uh, people going out to take smoke breaks, etc., etc. I'm obviously joking. Uh, these are then investigated very, very uh, rigorously um, uh, um, during proper sessions where we then start looking at uh, what is the value adding and non-value adding and policy related processes that are taking place within the, 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 the process or the operation. Naturally, we also like to take photos. We take photos so that we are able to then draw what we call before and after charts after after a while after uh, improvements have been have been have been have been um, uh, uh, bought off or after improvements have been implemented. Videos, if the if the organization agrees, are also very handy because then you can sit down later on and actually observe and identify some of the things that I've shared earlier on, such as your different types of wastage. We draw diagrams. We apply obviously project management tools uh, in order to ensure that we are able to derive uh, some form of uh, ROI or return on investment. Um, the expected results at the end of the interventions must lead to a measurable and decisive improvement in terms of quality, delivery, on time in full, cost saving. Of course, if you improve your quality and your delivery, naturally, your, there's going to be a knock-on effect on your cost saving. Because if your quality problems are escalating um, and, and your delivery problems are not being improved, 
or, or resolved, then we, we know very well that you you are not being co uh, co cost competitive. Naturally, when we implement these uh, solutions, we also want to see improvement in safety, staff skills, as well as knowledge. The overall competency set. Uh, there are other soft or qualitative um, results that are expected after we've done an intervention in your organization, uh, which is the creation of a culture of daily problem solvers, improving team engagement and employee relations, and generally feeling that people come to work because they enjoy being there and are not just going there because they know they're going to get a paycheck at the end of the month. Um, one of the ma majority of my clients, I'm, I'm, I'm referring to one because um, before I resigned or left my previous employer, I was working with this one particular client in the Bluff area who I'm going to share with you uh, in terms of the results that we have we've achieved. We usually prefer one to nine months or nine month period minimum intervention because that is what we have found to be the minimum uh, amount of time that allows us to be able to derive meaningful results. And uh, this one particular client who I'm going to share about later on uh, used to demand that I must be on site physically Monday to Friday for two weeks um, whenever I was I was in Durban, the other two weeks being spent in Pumalanga, the Lowfeld and the Highfeld respectively. So I was quite busy when I, when I was there. I'm still busy, by the way. Uh, so they would either choose some clients would choose Monday to Friday. Some clients would go for Monday to Thursday, Friday being being a, a short day for some companies. And what would really help sometimes, in, in many cases really, would, would be that uh, we would have a theme per month where the first month would focus on obtaining a baseline by understanding the process from internal and external customer perspective, identifying and capturing different forms of waste or wastage. Initial focus projects would be initiated as well as obviously presenting to management in terms of what was being done or what was actually unfolding. Um, how, how did I know that I had actually done a good job in terms of obtaining a baseline? I had to be able to bring myself to a position where when I was presenting to or when I presented to the production team from operations director all the way down to uh, the, 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 the lowest uh, level on the floor, I, I want to see heads bobbing going, yes, yes, yes. This is exactly how we produce what we produce. And this is exactly what we experience in terms of lead times, delay and problems and, 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 and opportunities for improvement. Then I know I've done a, a great job in terms of identifying the problem because as part of contracting, you need to uh, establish some form of credibility. And if you do a proper thorough baseline, then I promise you, you've already begun making some headway in terms of winning uh, your audience over in terms of trusting that whatever you are, you are, you are, you are uh, putting on the table is, 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 is a compelling solution or set of uh, uh, tools that could lead them to a, a good solution. Uh, month two, you usually start with your structured problem solving. You also want to identify your low hanging fruits because you want people to buy in immediately in terms of what you are trying to achieve. So your low hanging fruits um, uh, would be very, very useful uh, tools to ensure buy in and to also start teaching people the basic simple skills so that they can see that they can actually uh, control their own destiny in terms of uh, productivity improvement. Uh, also, what is very important is to conduct an employee's climate survey, as mentioned earlier on, list of about 25 questions or so, done confidentially and anonymously. I would then collect this because, again, you want to maintain trust between the, the client's employees and yourself. And uh, where this was managed properly, we got a lot of juice content that we could then present to the leadership in terms of areas of improvement, be it on goal alignment, perceptions on management, leadership, teamwork, and, um, and focus teams. Then you start, of course, every month you then present, I would then present to management to say, this is where we are. And uh, uh, so, 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 so you had to do this also to be able to, to ensure and, and guarantee them that there was some form of return on, on, on their investment. And uh, some of the services obviously were competitively priced and they wanted to see that they were getting value. Especially because some of some of the organizations, when you join them, I found that uh, sometimes they will already have a person or two who probably is as qualified, at least academically, or in terms of the certificates as you are as a, as a, as a consultant. So you need to really make sure that you deliver value, value faster, of course, so that they are able to then justify and see the, the, the marked improvement or difference in terms of how you approach uh, process improvement versus how uh, they may have done it perhaps in the past. Of course, month three, visual management, small group focus projects, et cetera, et cetera. We usually give organizations some leeway um, after month seven, because at, re at least you've done some work in terms of um, anchoring, if I can use the word, anchoring some of the basic uh, philosophies or basic tools and techniques and the thought process. Although you may not already have seen some of the meaningful results, but already the ethos 
of measurement, the ethos of looking for opportunities is, is sort of starting to get embedded. And then you can start to allow them to choose, for example, on month seven, uh, something like a local supplier audit. Very important as well, because the chain is only as strong as the weakest link. So even if you do things correctly within the organization internally, but if your suppliers are not uh, uh, inducted in the philosophy of Lean or Lean Six Sigma uh, or, or Kaizen, then you are shooting yourself in the foot. You will always be fighting fires uh, uh, or putting out fires. Uh, really, the, 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 the focus here, because we, if, if, you, if you are in a perfect market, um, very often you find that an organization that you work for is a price taker. In other words, you can't willy nilly or arbitrarily set a price. Very often the price is set by the customer's expectation or uh, because there's some degree of elasticity, of course. But um, so the only real room um, or, or, or leeway that you have is to really improve your costs, which is that uh, red area or red column uh, on my on my right, uh, the before the, the before uh, picture. If you reduce your costs, guess what happens? While the price remains, the selling price remains the same, you are able to realize higher profitability or higher profit margins just by reducing the costs. There is obviously understandable costs when you produce or offer a service, but some of the costs embedded or included or uh, 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 integrated into the, the price can be managed. And this is where we start looking at your CIPOC. This is when we start looking at your wastage. This is when we start looking closely at your problem solving. So the aim, don't change the price. Reduce your costs by implementing Kaizen tools, techniques. You could also study with TLC, who will teach you a, an approach called Lean Six Sigma. And if you like, you can go to Black Belt like I did. Colleagues, we want to locate our implementation on what uh, we call long term thinking. Yes, it's good and it's sometimes uh, it sometimes works for organizations to think short term. In other words, shed, sh uh, set short term goals uh, to be realized very quickly and, 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 and obtain some quick wins. But we often find it is more sustainable when an organization has a long term plan. Of uh, 12 months, 24 months, or sometimes longer. Yes, of course, because of the macroeconomic um, factors and market factors, it might not always be easy to predict what might happen in 36 months. I mean, consider somebody who was conducting or planning strategically uh, two years, three years ago. They did not factor in that there would be COVID-19. And they, here we are talking a second wave, probably third wave of COVID-19. No one would have, would have anticipated a, 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 a something as, as, as traumatic uh, and as, as and, and as um, uh, uh, negative as as, as COVID nineteen, but we, we still encourage organizations to take decisions from a long term perspective, because then when they are thinking long term, certain decisions will be properly considered, uh, the budget and the proper funds will be made available, uh, uh, or at least considered, uh, come budget time, so that we don't start something and then stop, and then and then we don't realize the full uh, uh, benefits. On top of long term thinking, we are then able to build. Processes, processes must always be documented to begin with, and these processes must obviously always be followed, but they are not cast in stone. Processes must be looked at critically on a fairly regular basis so that we are able to improve. And grow and respond to the customer expectations. Naturally, these processes are followed by people who must be treated with respect, who must be treated with dignity, who must be challenged and developed. This also links, by the way, to the balance scorecard method that was introduced and popularized by experts from America, uh, Norton and Kaplan, which focuses on four perspectives. The top one being your your financial, the second one below that being your customer perspective, followed by processes, and of course, underpinned at the very bottom as the foundation, as the pillar, uh, learning and growth. So this uh, dovetails very neatly with that if you have been exposed to that. And um, of course, at the top, we, we, all, we want to make sure that our members, our people at different levels and across the organization are being challenged to continuously keep their eyes open uh, and engaged in terms of problem solving. 
and I'm not talking uh, very complicated, sophisticated problem solving, just simple processes of asking what happened, who was involved, when did it happen, how did it happen, 5W1H, very simple basic tools, the fishbone or Ishikawa diagram, yeah, the Shuhart model, uh, your PDCA, all of these are simple basic tools that are important uh, to implement if you are serious about improving performance. Plan do check, Shuhart uh, cycle. So whenever we engage with an, with, with an organization or if, when you are, when you have decided that you want to engage in a continuous improvement journey, the first plan is to, the first step is to plan. What are you trying to achieve? Specifically, in color, smart, which means whatever you plan must be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. Yeah, then you execute. Very often, uh, I'm saying very often because it's it's one of those words that you know comes in or jumps in a, a lot in conversations. But I've seen organizations that do a quick job of planning, or rather, they do a good job of planning, but not enough doing, or they take time to actually implement or execute. Yeah. So you plan, you do, you then check, review, conduct what is called a hansei in Japanese, which means self-reflection, reflecting also on the processes, which then, which is why we encourage organizations to meet on a fairly regular basis, like daily. In fact, in some factories I've seen where we have a meeting in the morning and at 2 p.m. we meet again to check whether or not what we discussed in the morning at 8 has actually been implemented. Because otherwise there's, there's no sense of agency. If there's no sense of agency, things don't get done. And then you revise your strategy or your plan and you execute again uh, on, on, um, with, with, with a, a new, new understanding. And a typical example of a plan that I agreed on or contracted on with one of my clients in the bluff who are in the uh, lubrication oil blending business, a, a well-known organization whose name I'm not going to mention because I don't think I've got enough permission uh, 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 to, be, to be mentioning their name. Uh, we agreed on this plan. This was 2018. We were looking as, as far ahead as 2020, 2021 in terms of a uh, maintenance department, in terms of the filling line, in terms of the process flow mapping and other things. This was just uh, half the A3 that we, 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 we had contracted on. This is what came out as the outcome or as the output of the value stream mapping exercise that I did. OK, I tried to um, hide some of the information because it's sensitive and of course I might get into trouble. Um, but this is an example of a value stream map which uh, captures everything from the supply side all the way down to the customer on the other end. And you need to be very, very uh, specific number of members per, per section, cycle time if it's relevant, changeover if any, uptime which must be measured and verified, available time, the batch sizes, the number of shifts, uh, percentage right the first time, yield, OEE which um, is short for overall equipment effectiveness, reliability, very important. Uh, and so, I mean, some processes are, uh, can be longer than this. This is, this is a very short process. Some processes are much longer than this, and I'm sure Tanya, the director at TLC, is familiar with this given her background. <laughs> so after I had done this, I had a fairly good idea in terms of what was going on in this organization, in terms of challenges and, 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 and improve, improvement opportunities. And this allowed me to also sit with the manufacturing manager and speak with a degree of confidence and, and, and uh, credibility. And it allowed him to be able to get insights from somebody like me who was objective and looking at the process dispassionately. Some of the things that we were able to improve immediately was how they were, they, they were meeting. They used to meet around this particular area with two boards, um, a, a flip chart stand where they would only look at previous day's production. I suggested, let us renovate and spruce up a certain meeting area, which was used only for printing labels for products, uh, right in the middle of production, in the center of production. Strategically, when you get, when you are taking a walk to get into this room or to get into this meeting area, you had to go through the, the, the factory floor. In, by, by so doing, you are also being um, uh, conscientized or you are able to visually see what is actually going on in the factory so that when we talk and have discussions in the, in the meeting room, they are based on facts. In fact, I remember at some point uh, while um, uh, uh, spending my two weeks per month there, uh, I noticed on day one, man, it was a Monday, that we, the factory had, did not start on time. 
Tuesday, same observation. Wednesday, same observation. Thursday, same observation. Friday, same observation. And guess what? No one could challenge what I was saying because none of the people who were in that meeting room for five days consecutively uh, had actually been there when the factory started. So it also allowed us to be able to make meaningful changes that also then ensured that we were starting on time, thereby saving lost minutes uh, of production time. So we started having, for example, such things as your startup team who would arrive like 30 minutes before the production start, uh, would start and they would then ensure that all the, 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 the relevant hoses or, or, or connections were made at the top so that come 7.15 when we press the, uh, the, the button, the blue button, we start filling those uh, 200 liter drums. As an example of us meeting, you don't see me there. I was the one taking the photos. That's th that, that meeting area was full of an eclectic uh, uh, people or an eclectic set of people or group of people from different departments. The gentleman with his uh, hand on, on his mouth was a reliability uh, technician or reliability engineer. The gentleman next to him was the um, a operations excellence manager who took over the baton after me. The lady in 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 in, in a hard hat uh, was the planning manager. Um, the lady opening the door on my right uh, was in was in the blending section. The gentleman with the uh, radio on his chest was this production supervisor. And these were just snapshots that I took at random so that I could be able to show them later in uh, uh, what sort of results we are achieving. You'll see on the board there's a spreadsheet if you like and an action plan behind the operations excellence manager. Uh, because the, there was a war room, so to speak. That is where we, would able, we were able to see plan against actual and also start planning for, 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 for the following week. And the action plan on the side would always hold us account accountable on whether or not we're really, really uh, uh, serious about improving processes. There is a real live uh, RCA or root cause analysis session. What had happened here is that I was away in Pumalanga and I, was, I got a call to say the factory had stopped for 24 hours, which was definitely a serious crime because the threshold for, 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 for downtime was only two hours. In fact, that, even that was a problem. We didn't want to see the factory standing at all. But I was asked to facilitate this root cause analysis uh, process so that we could identify exactly what the problem was that had shut down the plant for 24 hours. Uh, the gentleman uh, closest to the board is an instruments uh, technician. The, the gentleman on the side is a BSc McKenj uh, student, or rather graduate, who was actually helping us to take the notes uh, during our discussions, which we later then presented as a full report uh, to the manufacturing manager, who I still, by the way, enjoy a very good relationship with. We communicate on a fairly regular basis. That is an example of what... Sorry, yes, sorry to interrupt quickly. Just a quick time check. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Sure. We just Al almost done. Uh, that yes, I know we've got yeah 15 perfect. minutes and then we'll just leave a little bit of time at the end for questions. If those perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> you have questions, would like to put it in the chat box. Awesome. Thank you Thanks, so much. Sure. An example of case study, uh, sorry, of 5S implementation. Obviously, that takes a little bit of massaging or 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 or, 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 or uh, change management skills in, in ensuring that people understand exactly what you're trying to achieve. So that's before and after. Some results achieved. In that same lubrication oil blend plant, in terms of scheduled adherence, OEE reliability, the blue line shows what we achieved during my time. Um, I said earlier on that the tools are applicable in all industries. This is an example of one of my clients in Leidenberg, if you are familiar with the Mpumalanga province, um, on your way to Mashishing. Uh, in, it's a printing plant. Again, I always start with the, the value stream map, which identifies the real problem so that I'm able to then uh, enjoy a proper session uh, giving feedback to the MD. On the on my left, you'll see a visual board. There's, that space was actually empty, and I wanted to make sure that the director understood why I was there and what I was trying to achieve. So I requested uh, her to give me space in her own office, which then allowed me to put exactly what we were trying to achieve. That is That, that was our, our dashboard. Some of the successes that we were able to, to, to realize in that printing company, uh, you'll see on, the on my left, uh, was a cluttered space on top of the director's uh, uh, office. That was actually worse than that. I, I lost the, the, the photos because I was taking photos using my, my phone. Step number two, progress. We put a, a mezzanine floor made out of wood, very solid. When I left, months later, there were people sitting in that space. We saved 14.3% of the factory space, where if you compare it to when I, when I came in for the first time, they were always complaining about space not being available or not being sufficient. Colleagues, as I close, in order for us to be able to realize the good results that I've just shared and more, 
it is important that there must be a structured approach as you prepare for the change because effectively you are asking people to do things differently compared to how they are they are used to or rather how they've been uh, performing and so i want to propose i would like to propose uh, you can use the quarters model or you can use lewin's change model people need to be able to understand what is going on or what you are trying to achieve and so you they have to be unfreezed in other words show them what's happening in the in the world Hence, I, I, I alluded to the macroeconomic factors, what's happening in your market. People must know and understand why you need to change. Speak to their hearts, speak to their minds. Show them the results in terms of client complaints, late deliveries, costs if you can. Once they have bought into the need for change, you then apply the changes by implementing Kaizen tools and techniques, Lean Six Sigma tools, a, so that they are, you are able to realize the benefits, some of which are similar to what we've, we've shown. Then, as you move on and you start realizing the improvements, you then refreeze or solidify the desired change by, for example, uh, agreeing and implementing a, a very balanced and, co and, and, and comprehensive, uh, a, 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 call it a, a reward structure a, or consequence management structure. Uh, people need to know when they've done well. People also need to know when they haven't done very well so that you are then able to embark on a, a higher level change cycle yet again. Sarah, may I stop here and uh, perhaps take some questions? Those are my contact details. I'm happy to engage with you even offline. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Peliswa. We really, really appreciate you speaking at our Lean Forum. And we so appreciate the insights that you've shared with us. Um, your knowledge, your expertise, your experience, we can learn so much from you. And I think what I've always enjoyed about the conversations that we've had is really just around how you can, I can actually feel your passion through the computer <laughs> when you're talking. You can just see, you know, you've, what you've experienced in these projects, you know, the, the photos that you've shared with us too, where you've really seen results. You've seen these tools making a difference. And I loved your comment around um, just, sh you know, sharing, you can keep your sale price the same, but reduce your costs and you will increase your costs. <laughs> yes. And that's exactly what this is all about, um, as well as respect for your people. And, you know, we've seen the benefits the hard and soft benefits. So we just really appreciate what you've shared with us this, uh, this afternoon. Thank you, please. So we'll open up for some questions now. Our managing director, Tanya Health, she's online and um, she'll be doing the closing. So I just wanted to say thank you from our side. We really enjoyed being online with you all. I think all right then. I think we can then perhaps uh, proceed and just really it falls to me um, the easy task of the afternoon to say a heartfelt thank you. Thank you so much to you, Poliswa. I think Sarah put it perfectly. Every time we speak with you, it is an opportunity to learn from you and to just be incredibly impressed and blown away by your passion, your commitment, the deep love that you have <laughs> for this topic, for the work, for the clients that you work with. And that's what we would love to do more of, learning from each other, sharing. There's so many opportunities for us. And I would just like to say thank you because we so appreciate your contribution as always. And we look forward to, yeah, many more. We hope to see you as again. As do I, as do I, Taya. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. I know how much work goes into putting these programs together, these, um, you know, slides, examples. I think you did a lovely job of combining both theory and background and, and the sort of academic side with real examples, lovely photographs and actual practical things. You Always taught me very well, Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> I know you that, but wonderful to, to have you online, Police. With Thank you so much for your time, for sharing with us today. Uh, just really wonderful. And then just to our, our guests as well today, Thank you for joining us. We always look forward to your feedback. If there are other guest speakers you'd like to hear from or particular topics you'd like to see covered in future forums, please give myself a shout, give Sarah a shout, contact us at TLC, get hold of us through the website. 
any of those opportunities as we would love to to have that opportunity chat with you further and see where else who else what are the topics we should bring to the lean forum and make it relevant for everybody so that we can all learn from each other that's it from me and so yeah. good afternoon everybody good evening have a wonderful yeah. evening stay safe <laughs>